Hi, I'm Casper on Tabletop. Does size matter? Welcome to Indie Thursday. Okay, so the first game I want to talk about today is an RPG that's pretty cool. It's got some really interesting uh, mechanics. Uh, so I've come to our own Titan, Jerry, uh, to talk about Reach for Titan, the RPG. What do you think about it, Jerry? It's an uh, interesting game. Um, in many respects, what it has going for it is it runs a lot more like a... <laughs> we'll work. go back. <laughs> Keep going, Jerry. Keep it, it, going. it works more like a um, online g computer game. So you've got the whole idea that the land is actually built by God for the Titans and humans have only come in and inhabited it later on. Uh, and they have sort of three phases built into the, the background where you're either building your settlement, you're out hunting Titans for resources and to find out just what has gone on because all of these Titans have some information that your seer can uh, impart to your settlement or you're killing Titans and when you kill Titans that's where the unusual mechanics really come in because they've added a mechanic that works like an online um, sort of RPG like World of Warcraft that sort of thing where you have raids and a raid boss and those bosses have specific mechanics and they do damage in various ways but and have requirements on how to be killed yeah. same sort of thing in this so titans are these monstrous uh titanic creatures um but they may have two stump attacks a tail lash and then a headbutt and depending on how they're being dealt with by your party yeah. is how accurate and quickly you can take them down so if you go in and think oh we're just going to climb up the titan and punch him in the face, you might discover at that point that he quite likes rolling around on the floor and squashing <laughs> everybody. So there is a aspect of trying to work out the best mechanics to take down that boss. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, do it without, well, I'm not going to say losing party members because they have this idea that all the party members are very heroic. It's kind of anime in that respect. Yeah. So the idea of people jumping from leg to leg and up the body and then just chopping somebody's head off with a massive axe or being whacked into a wall or in the you know a cliff yeah. face and still shrugging that off and coming back for more it's it's a very heroic feel to it as opposed to a sort of a more realistic fantasy setting well so. funny you saying about it uh being very anime like one of the things i compared it to about uh to was attack on titan mm. uh which i absolutely love as an anime series is part of the reason that this rpg attracted me um i love that the exact mechanic you're talking about that there's lots of different uh ways to to kill it but it's a puzzle you have to work it out first um before yeah. you can do the attack and you need to work out the different ways but i also really like um that you touched on there the three different ele elements of this it's not just a simple battle titans there's also yeah. settlement building there's titan hunting um and this kind of if you want to build the settlement if you want it to grow you need to go out and look for resources and that means coming face to face with titans so yeah. you don't really avoid yeah, battles it, it's it's not quite the sort of standard fantasy dungeon crawler yeah. where a party of murder hobos go from village to village killing every orc they can find you've, you've got this central settlement and instead of going out and just looting for gold you're going out there and trying to find the things that your settlement require to grow and expand and and be productive over time so it's got that it's really nice and the idea that you're not just going out looking for little mobs of goblins and kobolds who are scuttling about and harmless creatures that nobody really paid any yeah. attention to. Instead, you're going out looking for these things that are the sizes of skyscrapers and trying to find a way to bring them down. Yeah. You know, it's different. And I think the other interesting thing about this is that it's going on to Roll20 um, yeah. and being released on it, uh, which is a really good sign. If you're you yourself, I think, have used Roll20 yeah. in the past. I have. It's, um, it's interesting. It's a tabletop platform uh, online. So there's a few other companies, things like Wizards of the Coast are in there, and uh, so you've got D&D &D and that sort of thing. So it will be available as a PDF, it will be available as a book, or if you, if your gaming group is online, then you can actually just go in there and get all of the information through Rule 20. So you've got the maps, you've got the books. Uh, I think there's specific things like uh, some of the character sheets and Titan sheets that will be available I think specifically through that, depending on what sort of part of the Kickstarter yeah. you're at. Um, I really, I really like it. I like the fact that it's it's using those online platforms to reach further. Yeah. Um, but I like it as a game itself. I think it'd be fun to play around the tabletop. Now I'm not the biggest uh, RPG, or you know yeah. this. Um, but actually, this is one that might might entice me in. Might, might draw um, you in, yeah. It's always good when you have a hook and you're trying to get in an RPG, and especially with people who may not be role players. Yeah. Trying to find a way to get them in, and it could either be the background, or it could be the game itself, or in this case, having that 
sort of tangential anime feel to the, the way it plays is an excellent way to draw people in if they haven't played before. That's great. So it's from uh, third, third, act. third Act Publishing um, and it's running, the Kickstarter is running until uh, the 1st of March, first I of March, think. Yeah. Um, and I think there's also uh, Drive Through has the RPG download as well. At they the currently have a, about a 36 page basic download on one section, which is just Titan Killing. So there, there's the hunting aspect and there's the settlement aspect. Yeah. This is the essentially the core mechanics for the actual fighting. And they've got a, two or three different templates for Titans in there. So each of the Titans comes with a bit of lore, a bit of uh, backstory, explains what's going on. You get a big picture of them. And then you also get their abilities, what they do. And then there's, I think, three sort of character classes, we'll say. They're not your standard. You've got a, a sort of a, a tank an anchor, they call them, where you're trying to grapple and hook yeah, them down, like, yeah. gu like Gulliver's Travels, yeah. little people <laughs> trying to tie down something massive. Uh, climbers are particularly good for getting up there, uh, hunters for spotting weak spots and things like that. So they're, they're not running with the usual yeah. sort of um, classes. They've, they've introduced their own that more fit their world. So if you're interested, it's on Drive Through RPG and you can find the, the links will be. In the description, yep, yeah, down below. Um, so from larger in life to good things coming in small packages, Sam! So I'm here to talk to Sam, but I'll need to summon him. They're taking the hobbits to Mordor? It's Isengard, Isengard. They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. I'm not going through that again. Hi, Sam. Hi, Cass. <laughs> so I want to tell you about a tiny deck of cards that contains a lot of games. Okay. So this is a deck by a guy, it's just been designed, it's Anton Oddman. Um, and it's not even up for print and play yet. This is very, very new, but okay. I was interested in it because um, it, there are other decks that exist. Uh, there's a Flex Cat deck, there's a Skeleton deck, and there's a deck of many games, which yeah, I've seen heard before. Of that one, yeah, I've yeah. that um, But this is interesting because of the way it's been designed. It's very clear. It's, uh, very minimalist, and you know I am a minimalist. Yeah. Um, but you've had a look at it yourself, Sam. What do you think? I have, yeah. I, this uh, this uh, deck, as you say, contains a lot of different games, so it has the details just for a regular deck of playing cards. But there are also the details for games like Werewolf, Love Letter, Coup. So it is a very versatile deck. And I, I love games like Werewolf. Werewolf is one of my ultimate favourites, and I've used it in classrooms before. Well, this is part of the reason that I showed this to yeah. Sam, is that Sam introduced me to Werewolf, but the way he introduced me to Werewolf, because we didn't have the actual packet, yeah, yeah. was just with sheets of paper. So I found it really interesting if you can have a deck of cards that you can just take with you that has that inherently put in it. And what I really like about this design is that they have in the centre... Uh, your different rules. Um, so it's a deck of 54 cards um, and in it they have the different rules for coup, they have the different rules for love letter and they also have the different rules for werewolf. Yeah. But it just means that you have that there in hand which I think is interesting. It is very versatile. It's the perfect thing for a travelling gamer because you can bring a bunch of games without taking up so much luggage space. Having said that, I know you like the minimalist approach. I find that a bit dull when compared to like some of the fun artwork of say the version Wells and Miller's Hollow which I, I used to run that I just really like that evocative artwork but I think I think that's a uh, that's what that's what you pay for the versatile aspect of. Yeah, the I think I think whenever you're looking at something like this, which is compacting a lot of games yeah. together, um, you have to lose some of that aesthetic, which which sometimes can be so beautiful. Uh, one of the things that he does have in. Uh, excuse me, specifically to coup, uh, is a six suit uh, color deck, yeah. uh, which works for six suit card games, but also applies to the different colors in coup. So rather than having to lift your deck each time or lift your cards each time and check your roll, you can just lift the corner and the color still uh, correlates to the original coup game. I see. So it has these interesting uh, choices while still keeping that minimalism, which allows it to be so clear. Um, but as I said, it's very, very early on in the process for this one, but I think it's one to watch um, because if you are like us and you're constantly looking to play a yeah. game on the go, uh, then this, this might be one for you. Definitely. Before I leave, they're taking the Hobbits away. Uh, the sound? So the last game we're going to talk about is one that caught my eye because I'm a bit of a minimalist and this is three really interesting board games in one game um, and it's also 
about as indie as, as you can get. Ryan, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, so this is a game called Panakizi by Garage Games Australia. Uh, so this is three games in one bag. It's part of the Meg 100 Kickstarter initiative for January. So they did this bag in January 2017, but they're doing it again for 2019. So this is essentially uh, allowing creators who may have done very big projects to uh, design something with constraints and for little creators to get off the ground running and make something small with just a little bit, just a few constraints, limited editions, limited to 100 copies. So Panic Easy is a game of, no, it's not a game. It's no, three games. Exactly. Three games, yeah. Three so, for the price of one, man. Three for the price of one. So it's three games in one small bite-sized bag. And um, what are the three games? The three games are... Testing your pronunciation. Go. Van Kana. Maybe. Taluka. Yeah. Maybe. And Srak. Ooh, we're, not, we're not so sure about that last one. It's got S R R A K K. So we don't know. I feel like it's an orc name. <gasps> That's true. <Shrek>. Yeah. <laughs> Roll your R's. Exactly. But the 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 thing about these games is uh, that they all share the same components. So one five by five grid, uh, and probably about ten pieces on each side. Ten black and ten white, and then you can play three games with them. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. It's running until the 12th of February. Yes. I'm getting my months confused. I'm still not used to it being 2019. Yes, there's um, about 12 days left on it, I think. Yes, yes, And there is. Uh, I believe last time I checked, there are 21 copies available. So it's limited to 100. Mm, so you... There's going to be 20, right? Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. At the end of the day. <laughs> but <laughs> remind yeah. me to get it for the blog. <laughs> yes, yes, might be a good idea. Um, yeah, so. Uh, Good game? Recommend? I would, yeah. Well, I mean, it's an abstract game. And yeah. it's from, so, and it's kind of inspired, the aesthetic is uh, kind of an Indian aesthetic. It's all about um, that. But what's interesting about that is the Indian subcontinent came up with so many amazing games and there are some boards that traveled uh, east no. to it. Oh no, oh, oh no, we better go. <laughs> well, that's it from Indie Thursday. We talked about tiny games, the massive titans. You called. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.